Wilson, and I'm a professor of neuroscience here at the Gar Institute for Learning and Memory at MIT. My early training was uh, really influenced by both psychology and robotics. I wanted to build intelligent devices and understand what is intelligence? How do you build things that can interact with the world, that can, uh, that can uh, do smart things? So I was intrigued by intelligence, organic biological intelligence, and I started uh, looking into the brain, taking classes in that, uh, and I became intrigued with the brain itself. And that drove me into neuroscience. I was attracted to neuroscience first through modeling. I uh, did a lot of my graduate work building models of complex biological neural networks, trying to simulate brains. And so to describe technology that we use, why do we use that, why is it important? Uh, it's important to understand the basics of brain function, and that is the brain is composed of neurons. Neurons communicate with one another using electrical signals. That is the electrical discharges, that's action potentials, that's little uh, voltage spikes that travel along. Uh, the communication wires or axons, and it's these little spikes, the little bits of information that are, uh, that are tracked around, billions and billions of them all the time. This is what information looks like in the brain. And so if we want to understand that information, we have to go in and be able to monitor or record these little bits or little electrical discharges. And the, techni the, the technology used to measure these things, of course, these little uh, electrical blips are being generated by neurons that are, that are just you know, tens of microns across. Now, your average human hair is about 50 to 100 microns, so you could fit 100 of these things just on, your, on the, you know, the tip of one of, your, uh, one of your hairs. And so we're trying to detect individual discharges of the, of the tiniest fundamental elements of the brain. And the technology to do that is actually relatively straightforward. It involves taking very small wires that can be placed down into the brain with the tips of these wires positioned directly next to small groups of these um, brain cells or neurons. Close enough that we can pick up these electrical discharges by placing many of these recording electrodes or very fine wires into the brain. We can look at the patterns of activity, the information that's being generated. We can see how it's being transmitted, or at least what the effect is on some receiver, and then try to understand how that information is being transformed and ultimately what it means. The question of how does all this help us understand the brain, I think you have to think of it not, again, as an engineer, while we're trying to understand the brain, what we're really trying to understand is what does the brain do? And that is, how does the brain help an animal or help a you know, human being actually interact with the world? How does it help it make a decision, or solve a problem, or you know, decide where it's been or what to do next? And so, we can't look at brains just in isolation, like some science fiction movie where you have a brain floating around in a little, a little vat of fluid. That's not really a brain expressing what brains really do. To understand a brain, you need to see it in the world. You need to see it in the context of actual behavior. And then there can be uh, completely different states, like sleeping, where the brain will switch into these dreamlike patterns. So you have experience, you have perception, you have thinking, you have dreaming. This is what real brains do in the real world. And so to understand how intelligence and cognition and brain builds models, how all of this uh, comes into being, we have to look at all of those. We have to be able to look at not just at brain activity and behaving animals, but we have to be able to look at brain activity over the experience of an animal, including all of those things, and see how they're connected.